I'm sure you guys are really busy right now revising for your GCSEs, your A-levels, or even your university exams. But in today's video, I'm going to talk about why it's so important to get yourself involved in research. So in this video, I'm going to talk about why exactly you should be even remotely interested in medical research, but also why you guys should be reading medical journals and just simply keeping up to date with the latest innovations in medicine. Before I continue, I'd like to thank medify.co.uk for making this video possible. Now I know that a lot of you who watch my videos are currently doing your GCSEs or your A-levels, and most of you are aspiring medics or biochemists or something of a similar nature. If you aren't, I'm not complaining, thank you for watching. Before I tell you how to get research placements, I'm going to talk a bit about why exactly research is so important. Medicine is a field which is constantly changing. You've got new discoveries being made, you've got new technologies being introduced, and all of this is to ultimately improve patient care. Medical research fuels medical innovation. What does medical innovation mean? Medical innovation refers to us developing new drugs, us developing new surgical techniques. It, it encompasses the modernization of medicine and how it's allowing us to tackle new emerging diseases, but also it's allowing us to come up with new preventative measures. Also, research leads to changes in practice. For many years, a certain procedure may have existed in a hospital, but it may not have been the most efficient, and people may have been dying unnecessarily because of this. Because of medical innovation, because of research, because of studies, we can analyze what exactly works and what is the best for patients in hospitals and in any healthcare setting. And so we can reduce suffering and improve the welfare of patients. Medical research isn't just about patients and clinical based aspects. There's also the molecular aspect of it all. Some types of medical research actually allow us to improve our understanding of how certain mechanisms work, of how certain processes work. And this is super important in simply understanding what's around us. And by understanding the theory of what's around us, who knows, in 10, 20 years, we can actually put this theory to practice and come up with something revolutionary. So at the end of the day, medical research is super important. And you can go to any hospital and ask any doctor, any surgeon, and they'll all tell you that medical research underpins modern healthcare. So now we've established that medical research is important, let's actually talk a bit about how you can go about getting yourself a few placements. Medical research is one of the key roles of a consultant doctor, or a consultant surgeon even, and it's inevitable that as a doctor you'll get involved. So by showing some interest, by appreciating it now, you can improve your chances of getting into medical school. When you're trying to get medical research experience at a young age, a lot of you might be unsuccessful. A laboratory who are researching a very niche thing sometimes are very careful with the information they share. They want to be the people who ultimately get recognition for that research, for that time commitment and for all that hard work. And so getting access to laboratories is quite difficult. However, when you're in school, when you're reading a book or even on work experience, if you come across a really interesting condition that you are super duper interested in, I by all means recommend that you go out there and that you find a research placement. Near you guys, there'll be a big hospital, and at most hospitals you'll have laboratories of some sort. In addition, you might even have research centres close to you. So for example, I grew up in London, and so I had the privilege of being in one of the biggest medical research hubs in the world. So to get a placement, firstly you want to find a specialist in whatever you're interested in. I, for example, was super interested in cancer. Having spent some time learning about cancer at A-level, I was intrigued by the mechanisms that cause it. And so I thought, right, what do I do first? I first began by reading a few books, by finding a few articles about cancer to get a better idea. Once I realised that I actually found cancer pretty fascinating and not just superficially interesting, I thought, right, let's try and go to the laboratory and see how they're researching ways of how we can prevent cancers, for how we can see how cancers progress and how they, you know, get worse. I simply googled Cancer Research United Kingdom and of course the charity came up, but also a lot of articles came up about the latest innovations in cancer research. Some articles which are really popular, I decided to search up the authors or the researchers that produce that article. And often these authors or these researchers are part of a big laboratory who are working day in, day out, all year round to try and better understand certain mechanisms and certain disease pathways. So then I found the emails of a few researchers whose work I was actually interested in. I read their bio, but I also read a few papers that the research team had produced. And when I say papers, what do I mean? Does it literally mean A4 bits of paper that people write on? No, research papers are like research publications. 
A paper refers to a whole project that a research lab has done. Papers can be very specific, looking at one tiny molecular pathway trying to understand that better. Or they can be very broad if they're, for example, a clinical study. So then I found a few researchers and I sent them an email. Now a few other researchers had met at lectures, but also I knew a few people through school and family connections. And so I sent these people an email saying that I was interested in their work and I mentioned a few papers that I'd read of theirs that I found interesting. And then I also talked about whether I could possibly spend some time in the laboratory, even if it's a day, just to see how a research environment is and how that environment allowed them to produce such thorough research. So by being specific to each researcher, I was ensuring that I was respecting their work but also appreciating their work, making it more likely for them to say yes to me. So a few researchers got back to me and they said, yes, feel free to come to my laboratory and look around. I visited a few laboratories in London, but also I visited a few laboratories in Cambridge. Now I do note that at this age I was still 15, 16, so pretty young. Um, and I only had exposure to GCSE level biology. I didn't really know much about the super sciencey stuff behind cancer that I'm learning about now at medical school. So even if you haven't learned all about it, visiting a laboratory isn't about actually understanding the depths of what the work is. It's to increase your exposure to a research environment and it's to help you appreciate the importance of medical research. Do remember that some of these researchers are the world leaders in certain parts of the medical field. At certain laboratories, I was able to spend a few days really understanding their work but also getting to speak to everybody, from the lab technicians, to the PhD students, to even the group leader. And this was fascinating, and it gave me a lot of stuff to talk about in my personal statement, but also in my interview. And when you're applying to places like Oxford, like Cambridge, who are research-based universities, they will love your interest and curiosity for medical research. I suggest that you guys also get out there, try and find laboratory placements and try and get stuck in there. I have a few friends who managed to get a few scholarships, for example, the Nuffield placement, and they spent six to seven weeks in a laboratory actually doing their own little project. I tried applying for a few of these things, but I didn't get in, but I strongly recommend that if you are able to spend such time in a laboratory, definitely go for it. But do remember, this is all extra on top of your work experience, your volunteering and your grades, etc. when it comes to applying for medicine. So let's quickly talk about medical papers and why it's important that you read the latest articles on medical research. So when you're applying to medical school, it's important that you show the people who you're trying to impress that you are on top of current affairs in medicine. As a doctor, as a surgeon, as a future healthcare professional, you need to be on top of the latest innovations in medicine so that you are able to change the way you practice and incorporate research into how you help patients to improve the patient's well-being. And by keeping up to date on research, you will be doing that to the best of your abilities. So why not start now? Throughout GCSEs, throughout A-levels, every day I'd read the BBC Health section. I'd also try and read the BMJ once in a while if I could get hold of it. And I actually subscribe to The Lancet. Now The Lancet, the New England Journal of Medicine, the BMJ, these are all high level research publications. You're never going to understand everything in there. Well, I didn't anyway with my GCSE slash AS slash A-level level biology. And what I really recommend is that you just skim through these research papers looking for articles that you find interesting. If you find it interesting, then give it a read. If you don't find it interesting, then leave it. Now when I was reading The Lancet, I came across some really interesting articles and what I did was I just ripped them out and kept them aside. I'd read them again, I'd look more into them, I'd actually try and understand the article. Now by doing this early on, I kind of appreciated how papers were structured, how research projects were structured. Sometimes I looked into a bit more trying to appreciate the methods, but also looking for parts of the methodology that could have improved. In fact, in my personal statement, I did mention a medical paper. Now, not all of you will do that, and you don't actually have to do that, but I found that paper super useful for helping me understand Barrett's esophagus, a condition that I'd seen in work experience. And so when I mentioned that paper, I came to my Cambridge interview, they were actually quite interested in that paper, discussing why I found it interesting and how it helped my understanding of what I'd seen in work experience. So what's important is that you read these papers, try and fulfill a question, that you may have thought of when you saw a condition. Because when you do mention it in your medical interviews, it'll be super smooth if you just drop that paper in whilst you're speaking. In summary, what I'm telling you guys to do is to get out there, sort out some research placements, and really try and appreciate the importance of medical research. Once again, I'd like to thank medify.co.uk for making this video possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. Best of luck with the rest of your revision. For any questions you may have, or for any video requests you have, comment down below and I will respond to you. So once again, thank you so much guys and I'll see you soon. Take care.